In this video clip, we're going, to we're going to use Visual Studio 2010 and use the Add Rotator Control to create some banner ads to randomly display banner ads on our website. So let's create a new website. And I want to make sure it's C-sharp. I'm using version 4 of the framework. An empty website, and I'll already get my path selected here. But if you don't, you can click on Browse. And I'm going to call this Example 5. Select EX05. <clears throat> and click OK. Now, what I want to do is create a folder on the right. I already have some images set up, so I'm just going to create a new folder for my images. I'll call this images. You could call it banner ads, too, if you want, or ads. So, make the images folder. And I already have these files set up. I'm going to highlight these, right-click, and copy them and bring them in. Notice before I do, though, that the size, they're relatively small in size, and the dimensions, they're not... It should be exact, but they're not quite. I've just sort of eyeballed it. But for you, you might want to make sure that you have the exact dimensions you want for each ad so there's no play. Right? They all take up the same amount of space. You can see this is 533 pixels wide by 86 pixels in height. All right. So I'll just right click over here on the uh, folder and paste those in. And now I have my images in there. Next, let's right click and we're going to add a new item. Now, typically, it's default ASPX. That's your entry port into a web, and every website should have a default ASPX. So, if you're doing Microsoft development, what I'm going to call this is banner ads, right? And this isn't the best <clears throat> implementation of this. You would want to modify this into a better uh, format, but I'm just demonstrating a concept right now. So, web form, C sharp, banner ads, and click OK, <clears throat> and it'll create our form for us. In a second here and uh, let's put in the title we'll put banner ads in here All right that example and I'll call the form banner ads and then in the uh, <clears throat> div block we'll just put an h3 tag in here and let's just say banner ad example okay now what we want to do is, is bring over the add rotator control. So that's over here in the toolbox. Just drag that in. All right. And we'll just call this add rotator banner ads. All right. Now I'm going to save this and I'm going to go over to the design tab. All right. You could do this in code, but I think it's easier to do it, more user friendly to do it in design. No, I don't have a height and a width. So I'm going to go back and change this up. So remember from our our files, my height was, and this is where it's important to have the same dimensions. So I'll say 530 by, I don't know, 80, and that'll be sort of a compromise. So let's put that in here. So a width of equals, and you might want to do this through styles. I'm doing it right in on the, as an attribute of the uh, tag. And height, let's just say 80 pixels. Right. So now I can save it, and let's look over here on the uh, design. And you can see it's it's not centered. It's not where I really want it, and I may want to use it in a header for all my pages, or I may want to uh, have different size ads, maybe on the right in the right column or left column, or as footers. Okay, so but we'll just demonstrate this for right now this way. Next, I'm going to put a break tag in here. Okay, VR tag, and this next control won't show up. Um, but, um, you know, when you display the, uh, the, the, the page, but what we're going to wind up using is the XML data source. What we want to do is create an XML file now that will store, uh, that will sort of be the, the data repository for all of our images. It'll have our information about our images. So I've already created this. I'm going to bring this over as well. So let me find this so I don't have to create it again. And I'm going to open it up so you can see it and it will, and you can copy or you know, sort of, uh, you know, Duplicate this, if you will. Paste this in here. Paste. Let me open this up. So, <clears throat> XML stands for Extensible Markup Language, and these files are case sensitive, so you have to be really careful. So, what we have is an advertisements tag, and then we have an ad tag for each banner. So, you can you know, mimic this. You have image URL, capital I, capital U. It's important again for the case to be the same. <clears throat> And then I specify the path for my first image, right? So image one over here. And what's going to happen is when I uh, implement this, 
these uh, every time the page loads, one of these five images will be displayed randomly. There are other uh, tags or elements that you can use to uh, dictate the frequency of how often the ads are displayed. You can look that up online as well. And I don't have the keywords listed here. You can you know look look that feature up as well in the MSDN documentation. So basically, you're going to repeat this five times. And at the end, you'll have a closing tag for advertisements down here with a slash. All right. And what I, you know, you should have, you know, a link that's relative. So, uh, so in other words, when I click on that banner ad, I'll, I'll go to that web page. So I have this XML file, right? That's my data source. Next, I can, I can, I can drag this XML data source in now, or if I go over to Design, it'll do it for me by doing this. When I come over here, I have this smart tag. If I hover over the ad rotator control, I see this little smart tag control. I click on that. It says choose data source and there's none there. So I'll go ahead and say new data source. <clears throat> and now it's going to try and find, uh, well, it's going to create a data source for me. If I go up here, look for it. Oops, let's see. Taking a while here. Here we go. So now it says, uh, are you going to bring data from a database? Um, you know, or some other object or what? So we're going to use an XML data file, like I mentioned. And it generates the name XML data source one. And of course, we don't want to use the default names ever, right? You want to change it up. So we'll just say XML data source banner ads. And I'll click OK. Now it wants to find that XML file that I built. So I want to browse that and find it. And there it is, right? It just, it just happens to find it. Again, you could have this in another folder someplace if you wanted. Type of file XML, click OK. Notice that it puts a little tilde sign. This is the sign, I guess, above the, uh, is it the uh, tab key or, or next to the one key on your keyboard. And then a slash for the path. And I'll do OK. All right. So uh, so there we go. So now this is that XML data source. I said it would be it would you know put that on the screen. This doesn't show when the page is displayed. And I could have dragged this over and then used the smart tag here and done the same thing. But it just you know this took me through the whole procedure as well. So if I save it now and preview this in the browser by clicking here or Control F5, either way will work. Right. Let's see what I get. As it comes up, my server sets up. Let me resize my page a little bit. All right, so there you go. So, <clears throat> banner ads.aspx. If I refresh, right, like I'm coming in again from the, a new, uh, uh, another, you know, another time. So it's random. So it's, um, you know, so it generates a random number basically from one to five and sets it up. So sometimes you'll get the same thing twice. So every time you refresh, every time you come in, you'll get a new ad. Of course, you can create more than five, right? So, so there you go. That's a quick demo on how to create um, banner ads very really easily um, without really coding at all. We didn't use any code. We just added the uh, ad rotator control and then and an XML data source and made it happen.